I think Kiss, the senators knew uh, the CRE is coming. And uh, this, I'm happy they postponed and, uh, you know, they said they need time, maybe they need time to consult and all that, but they knew it was coming. So I don't see why we should be debating it seven times, postponing the sittings of the assembly. They should decide on it once and for all, because they are representatives of the people. They know once, they, we, uh, like my, my colleague said, uh, once we do not have money in the counties, service delivery is almost impossible. And as county governments, we depend on this revenue to, you know, to build those ECDs, to build roads, to deliver services to the people. And as my colleague has mentioned, we've dealt the budget in time, the 264 million to, to respond on issues uh, to do with COVID. And unfortunately, we also had a, a member, not a member of the county assembly, but a, a, one member of our staff testing positive and another member from the executive side, we had three in total. And it exposed us in a, in a very bad way because we had since, since March to prepare for, you know, for, to respond to this COVID. And what we found out as an assembly, we also we sent our committee and we found out that the isolation center we had, there were issues which maybe were expected because it was the first time we were experiencing COVID. There, were no, there was no water in the, in the health center that's supposed to be the isolation center. The beds didn't have the beddings. The, the, the meals, you know, they were served late. The doctors were not, the medical staff were not uh, prepared to handle COVID. So I think uh, this COVID exposed us in a, in a very bad way. However, Trevor, I believe we are, we are progressing. And when, when, when the assembly intervened and we asked questions, uh, we now have the borehole being done. We had water from uh, a church nearby. So I would say we, 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 we haven't, you know, as, as, as Nyandarwa first, we haven't, we had not prepared as we, we are supposed to have done. We All also right. don't have an operational ICU right now, which I believe there are, there are things, you know, because as an assembly, we, 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 whenever we pass the budget, the implementation lies with the executive side. And so for us, uh, I believe this is not time for blame games. It's the time for people to carry out their roles as they are supposed to do. But as a, as a representative of the people, what is the problem right there, Honorable Wanjiku? Because you say implementation lies with the executive and you've already passed those budgets. Yeah, what I'm is that the, delay the all about then? The problem is, uh, is uh, with the implementation. I'm a member of the Committee on Implement Implementation and we are looking into that report. Will of course, you know, report back to the house, and uh, all I can say is that the problem is with the executive side. It's not with the assembly. It's the implementation part of it, because for us, we pass the budget. All right, let's bring in a speaker here on this conversation. Speaker, before before I lost you there, there was a conversation around the best way to, to deal with the revenue issue, but now we've since moved on to COVID-19. Let's talk about Nyeri, for example. Are you satisfied with the preparations so far? Honorable Kagusha? Honorable Kagushi, are you satisfied with the preparations of Nyeri County when it comes to COVID-19? All right, we seem to be having a bit of a challenge with the sound from the speaker there. That's uh, John Kagusha. We'll try and fix that and get back to him in just a bit. Honorable Njiku, yes, we, let's stay with the COVID-19 issues so far. You've said in Nandaro now there's still no ICU bed as it stands, but... What are the priority areas for MCAs? Because your role is supposed to be representation, legislation, and oversight. In your oversight roles, you can see that there are some things that are not happening as, is, as we speak. So what is the next step? Yeah, we've, uh, we've raised the, you know, the relevant questions with the executive, and they are, they are responding to them. You know, as I said, this is not time for blame games, because, uh, you know, it's our collective responsibility both as members of the county assemblies and the executive uh, side to deal with the issue. So what we are doing as an assembly, it's, you know, raising the relevant questions and ensuring, like, for example, that ICU is fast-tracked 
so that when when we have cases and when we have you know we are we are lucky the, the cases we had were asymptomatic we do not know what next what will happen next so for us it's to raise the necessary questions and ensuring that what's supposed to be done is done and you know also timelines is also important at this time uh, because you know we, we we cannot we cannot you know we, time is not on our side because anything can happen we've seen We've seen people die. We've seen, you know, it's not when we are saying COVID is not there. COVID is real. It's there. So for us, we, to, we, we you know, we are talking to our people. But as as their representatives, we also we are also holding the executive accountable and ensuring they do they implement the budget as fast as possible. Because you know, for us, we pass the budget in time. All right. Let's bring in Honorable Kagusha and this if the sound is good now. Honorable Kagusha is a speaker for Nyeri County. Honorable Kagusha, like I mentioned earlier on, we were speaking about the county revenue division, but now we've since moved on to COVID-19 preparations. What is your assessment of Nyeri County's preparations as we speak? Uh, no, I have, I have a big problem with our prepar preparation, unfortunately. I do not think a lot of counties are well prepared. Uh, counties have uh, so far prepared on uh, bed capacity, what they have calling, what they have been calling bed capacity, which I personally have a very very big problem with because uh, generally we, we we are saying that we want to have beds for isolation, but see Trevor, a lot of cases that you are receiving now are asymptomatic, and and hence you ask yourself, do we want or do we still need to continue? isolating as asymptomatic uh, uh, asymptomatic cases in hospitals or do we need hospitals for those people who get symptomatic and they get sick and to to, uh, to my best of understanding where we are going and from an analytical perspective we need to prepare hospitals to handle cases which uh, need uh, life support and we need to have hospitals to prepare to handle cases uh, which are um, uh, people who are actually sick uh, because as far as I'm concerned the bed capacity that we're actually talking about a lot of times is just like accommodation and and to my best of knowledge this can be handled at uh, KMTCs can be handled in uh, isolation centers like schools but hospitals must be equipped now to handle cases which get critical and that require oxygen support and that require uh, medication and uh, I think that is where we should go, other than filling hospitals with people who are asymptomatic. Now, as we stand today, I can say, yeah. and, and, I, and, I, and I would like to be honest, that uh, in our county, Nyeri, we, we, we would be caught flat-footed if, uh, if at all uh, we would require a lot of people who need uh, life support. And I know this is not only a problem with Nyeri County. I know there's a problem that is happening with counties. And I would like, even when uh, His Excellency the President is going to be holding this uh, summit with the governors, I would like him to emphasize uh, that there is need to prepare hospitals to handle critical cases. And, and, and for example, I, ha I have seen a lot of the monies have been disbursed to the counties uh, for COVID support. A lot of it is being used for non-core business. And, and you see, of course, this money is not being appropriated by the county assemblies. In Nyeri, for example, we have formed an ad hoc committee of the top leadership of the county assembly to uh, uh, to try and understand how is the government of Nyeri uh, proposing to use the 124 million that they have already received, plus uh, much more that we have already appropriated from the county assembly. Uh, in total, for example, like now, how much we have already given to the county government is 154 million. So we are trying to see how is the county government proposing to use this 154 million? And of course, what you see in most of the counties will shock you because a lot of counties are preferring to use this money for non core health business for example like buying food to people and if there's a rural uh, county where you would expect that people would be getting food from their shambas at this particular moment what we need to do for example now is to prepare hospitals is to equip them with oxygen put oxygen in all the level four hospitals uh, put oxygen in the COVID centers put machinery which is going to be critical to support life you, you know as we talk today we do not have so many cases that do require life support but these cases are likely to come up in in due course and so from my point of view i would like to be honest with kenyans and tell them if today you need life support in a lot of the counties that we have in kenya 
you will be on your own and you will most likely lose your life if that happens. And as I'm calling upon the county governments, I have been in, con uh, in, in communication, for example, with the uh, governor in Yeri, and I'm expecting to see action taken because we as leaders do have a responsibility and we cannot wait to see, uh, for example, people um, uh, facing a situation where they need life support. They can't get it. We have so much money. You know, this is not when we have been saying that uh, we don't have money. Today we have, like, for example, in Nyeri County, we have yeah. 154 million Kenya shillings, which should be used um, to prepare hospitals for people who may require that kind of support. And, 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 and as a leader, what am I doing about it? We as county assembly, we have formed an ad hoc committee, which, is, which has been going through all these hospitals. We have had preliminary communications with the executive yeah. in Nyeri County, for example, and then we're doing a, a report, a very comprehensive report, proposing what we expect to be done. And, and this money that is in the county government needs to also be appropriated through the county assemblies so that there is also that oversight. If you give 124 million to the okay. side, which really doesn't go through the oversight, and then you say you will dispatch a team, for example, to go and audit that money after two or three months, uh, definitely yeah. you, you're going to have the, the common monarchy losing in terms of uh, that preparation that we so much need at the county level. Okay. Andre Bonjiku, is that the same situation in Yandarwa? Because uh, what Gusha is painting is a very grim picture of some money that is being used for non-core functions, and yet it doesn't go through the MCAs. I know you approve the budgets, but there was an extra allocation of about 5 billion shillings that was sent to yep. counties, different amounts going to different places. Are you satisfied with the way Nyandarwa has used their portion of the money? As I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm not. Because uh, saying like uh, even right now we do not have a functional ICU that exposes us in a very uh, you know awkward manner, and I think it's the high time governors now decide uh, the COVID is there and this is how we are going to deal with it because uh, it's not a time for you know exchanging words saying you know it's uh, the, the, the the assembly. The, 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 you know, the assembly doesn't allow me to work and all those issues. They need to once and for all decide we have COVID and to prepare in, you know, in line with the, with the Ministry of Health guidelines. Because we also had, we, we also had uh, the home care, we have the home care, the home care issues. And as, as Kagusha has mentioned, most of, uh, you know, the, maybe the people we are getting that, that are testing positive are asymptomatic. We do not have a way how you know they can they can be they can be they can be taken care of at home we do not have trained health pro, pro, uh, health professionals to deal with the covid cases all, all we are saying is let our priorities be put in order we know icu is a priority the isolation beds might not be a priority but training of the health uh, health professional is also a priority right now so I think it's the high time governors now, now you know, relooked into the way they are dealing with this COVID issue and how they are spending the money meant for COVID response. Honorable Njiku, what would you say to the people, the critics who say that MCAs are simply sabotaging governors? And you've alluded to it by saying that this is not the time for people to say the assembly is not allowing me to work. But is there some truth to it? No especially in the case of Nyanaro and many other counties, because I have friends all over, uh, there is no sabotage at all whatsoever. There is no sabotage. But you know, when, you know when, when, whenever governors are, are, not, are not able to implement the budget, when they are blamed, they, all, they always, of, of course, most of them say it's the assembly. Instead of correcting their mistakes, they say it's the assembly. But you, they are not pointing out where exactly in our roles have we failed. Have we passed the budget? Have we, have we you know, passed the necessary... Uh, I mean, laws to ensure the governor, the governor's work. So I really don't know how we are sabotaging, but it's okay. It's it's good for them to say where have we as assemblies failed in our roles. All right, on Bukagusha, I'd like you to talk about the same conversation there. There's because there's an allegation that most MCAs, of course, want to ascend to different seats, either MPs or senators or governors, and therefore they're deliberately curtailing and sabotaging the governors simply because they want to take over after them. Uh, well, I, I, I have not really heard of uh, MCAs who want to be governors, but MCAs do have a constitutional mandate to oversight how the county is operating 
and really that is an expectation every Kenyan should have that MCAs are supposed to oversight and uh, I, I, I know I don't like how uh, people treat members of county assembly a lot of times because when there is uh, too much quietness and governors misuse the resources at the county level who do you blame most it is members of county assembly you say members of county assembly have been compromised and they have uh, gone to bed with the, uh, the county executive but again when members of county assembly talk is like you also don't expect them to talk uh okay of course i know that we could also be having sometimes lack of wisdom at the county levels where some of the members want to start with impeachment for example uh, of the county executive other than pursue every other available uh, avenue to resolve the issues for example uh, like i'm alluding to the issues that we think as county assemblies are not uh, being executed properly we are not talking of impeachments we are not fighting the governor we have so much in september what does that mean in a county like nyeri where we have uh, non-communicable diseases which are prevalent uh, high blood pressure uh, diabetes, you know, w w when you have those kind of cases, for example, in a county like Nyeri, and then you reach the climax in uh, in September, that means that in in a week you may need to support more than 20 people uh, to survive. And when when the last time I checked, about three weeks ago, I saw that out of 160 people who had been on the ICU, 93 of them had recovered. That means the recovery level yeah. and the recovery rate for those people who are supported through the ventilators, through the ICU, th through uh, you know, uh, proper uh, high flow of oxygen, uh, a very good percentage of those people are recovering. So if we cannot, for example, in the counties be able to support that, yet so much money has already been appropriated to us or has already been given to us through the national government, and we have not prepared for that, then don't you see we are exposing our people? Do you think me as a speaker, do you think Nyeri County Assembly, do you think any other county assembly, do you think any other MCA should keep quiet so that they look good and that they look like they are not yeah. uh, supporting the, 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 the establishment? I think that would be the highest level of yeah. um, hypocrisy and unpatriotism. And I think times like this call for us to be patriotic. Okay. They call for us to say the right things, to say the truth, and so that right action can be taken. For example, like me, for me, I'm, pressur uh, I'm pressuring yeah. To have the the money that has been allocated to Nyeri County taken to the core, core, core health uh, support, core health development uh, agenda, other than, for example, mm -hmm. right, directing money to buying linen, buying food, uh, you know, buying uh, too much sanitizers to take to, you know, we we need to really focus on oxygen support, ventilators, uh, high flow oxygen, okay. ICUs, HDUs. We need to have functioning COVID centers so that Love. we can support our people. All right. Honorable yeah. Wanjiku, are you alive to the fact that there's going to be possible massive misuse of money and corruption? Because you just said this money, some of it doesn't come through MCAs and therefore there's really no oversight. It came directly from the national government to the governors and now you're saying they're not using the money appropriately. What options now are left? Are you keeping an eye on these monies? And then what, can you talk about it to the ESEC or something? Yeah, luckily for us in Nyandarwa, there is always uh, a possibility of the information flowing to the assembly. Because you also have people from the executive side who, of course, are also not comfortable. So I believe eventually we'll also know. Uh, for us, we are first, you know, looking, and as I said uh, yesterday, the Committee on Implementation, which I'm a member of, well, we were looking to the, into the report of, how the, the the money now the one that passed through the assembly <clears throat> has been utilized. I also believe the other the other the other the other part will also be able to know how it's been utilized because that doesn't mean if uh, that doesn't mean uh, we cannot ask questions we cannot raise questions on the same as an assembly because as people's representatives we also have the mandate of knowing how money that of course came. For, to, to deliver service to them from the national government is also used in the right uh, in the right manner. So I believe, yeah, we cannot we cannot say that there won't be or there will be corruption. But as an assembly, uh, Trevor, I'm assuring you, will do what ne what needs to be done to ensure the right information. We get the right information and to ensure the, the, that 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 those monies are used to the last shilling to do you know to uh, to. All right to do what's supposed to do.
Okay. Honorable Kagusha, final remarks on this. How do we ensure there's no pill frillage of this money? I, I, I sincerely want to call upon our executives across uh, the country. And when I say this, I'm talking about all the governors. I'm talking of the uh, CCs in charge of uh, finance. I'm calling upon also the CCs in charge of uh, uh, health that at, uh, at the grassroots level, we need to ensure that the money that we are receiving is being directed to the proper use. And, and, and again, also, I want to call upon the county assemblies to move very fast also to, um, you know, establish mechanisms on how to oversight these funds that are being allocated to the to the counties. Of course, we appreciate that we already have an itinerary for the Auditor General on how they expect to be auditing this money. But remember, the Constitution has established methods, I mean, um, ways in which uh, the, the county assemblies are the first line of oversight in the counties. And so by the time the, uh, the, 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 these resources are being oversighted or audited by the uh, Auditor General, we expect that the county assemblies will already have moved into uh, uh, this aspect of oversighting what is happening. And, and of course, we all need to be patriotic. We need to know that we are in extremely sensitive times. We need to know that the life of our people is so important. We need to know that we are also not um, spared uh, by this menace. And so if we do not prepare well for the public in terms of ensuring that they are well taken care of, we are also impacted negatively, also affected your, your constituents, your relatives, yourself as a person as well. You are also impacted neg negatively by these uh, menace, the pandemic. And so we, we've got to do the right thing. We've got to honor our electorate at this particular time and ensure that every single yeah. shilling that we are receiving is being utilized for the benefit of common monarchy. This is really not time uh, for entrepreneurship. Okay. In fact, if one ever, uh, if, if one ever right. thought of doing entrepreneurship, it is not using these uh, resources on the ground that have been released for the uh, common monarchy. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us this morning. Honorable John Kagushi, Speaker Nyeri County Assembly, and Honorable Wanjiku Muhoho, Nyandarwa County, nominated MCA. Thank you so much for making heads and tails of that conversation in terms of COVID-19 preparedness. We'll keep an eye on most of the counties, just to get a pulse of all, all, of, all of them, actually, just to know how prepared they are from the grassroots level. But on this time now, we're taking a quick break here on Daybreak. When we come back, it's Bulls and Bears Thursday.